All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I believe everybody who's on here, I've got clicked so that you can record. So if not, raise your hand and let me know. We've got a few more who'll be jumping in. Obviously, Coach will be jumping in here momentarily. Just to give everybody a heads up, um, we will begin our weekly cadence next week for regular season. So game notes will be sent out early next week, along with rosters, depth charts, all that sort of good stuff, as well as uh, additional Zoom information. So which will be available again on Monday, and then we'll have players available throughout the week for some Zoom calls as well. So again, I'll be uh, sending an update on that, but just so you can be prepared for uh, week one to officially kick off. But today we we're just going to kind of tie the bow on training camp. And again, I talked with Coach. He'll be uh, got to be jumping on anytime so love it we got a full house today i think there's a couple more who may be jumping on as well so this is awesome Coach just said two minutes, so <laughs> appreciate the patience. So I think uh, I think he may have uh, zipped over to to Tampa today to reintroduce himself to his family. So it's been a long <laughs> a long stretch for these guys, but uh, they get a couple days off here to kind of reset, regroup. Um, some are changing up hotel rooms, you know. Again, just getting everything consolidated, get ready for week one. So uh, we may have a couple number changes as well on Monday. Uh, but again, we'll we'll send out an updated roster for you guys. So we'll have all of that with the game notes. And so we get ready to head down to San Antonio. So. Um, can give you guys a little update on the dome too. Just hanging out. So, uh, the turf down at the dome this past week, they, uh, re rubberized the infield. They worked on that refurbishing it a little bit. Um, it was regroomed a couple of times. They've had the, uh, the turf experts in to evaluate it. Um, so they're still waiting for the results of that, but the eye test, everything was good. So the dome has been prepared. Uh, it's been rolled back up because there's events the next three weeks. That's why we're on the road. Um, so it'll be rolled out the week of our first game, and then they will be painting it then. So um, the dome's continuing to get ready as well. I see our, our head coach has joined us. So again, just um, let's put a bow on training camp. And then next week, again, we'll officially kick off week one. But on that note, I will pass things over. Good morning, coach. Uh, how are you? I'm doing great. Sorry, guys. Um, a couple minutes later, a little technical difficulty there. Um, but yeah, appreciate y'all coming on. Uh, training camp was uh, was outstanding. Um, you know, we felt like we had more than uh, more than 51 good players on our team. 
there's probably some names on there and and from the the course of time from releasing players that people maybe have thought okay uh they're good players but uh we feel like we have the best 51 well we have 50 now we'll be adding one more quarterback here and once we um once uh, the the quarterback passes the physical and everything's in line, we'll make that announcement on who that is. But uh, we feel good about every position. We feel like we have great depth. We like our skill. Um, you know, we're healthy right now as a football team. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to, you know, kind of focus in now on our first first opponent. And uh, we'll welcome the, the the team and the players that officially have made the 51-man roster here uh, collectively as a group on Sunday as we kind of work through things here the next couple of days. All right, we'll open it up for questions. Again, we've got a full house, so if you can just do two questions, then we'll try and circle back through. And if you want to raise the hand on Zoom so we can see you, but uh, we'll kick things off post-dispatch. Joe Lyons, go right ahead, buddy. Hey, Coach, how are you? Uh, good Fantastic. morning. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Appreciate it. Um, talk a little bit about just where you see the strengths of this football team. What What's the best parts of this group? Yeah. So, uh, you know, offensive side, we feel like we have a good six man rotation offensive line wise uh, from the middle of our line to the left hand side. We uh, we feel like that's our strength. And then our right guard and right tackle are very good players with another rotational player as well. Uh, skill positions are really sharp uh, receivers. We have big, long, fast receivers. We have good inside guys. Uh, that present problems, obviously, we hope for for defenses that we play here down the road. Um, quarterback situation is, is, is outstanding. A.J. McCarron, obviously, was the clear cut uh, number one across the board, uh, brings leadership. Uh, he's like another coach on the field, guys. It's important to have someone that can lead the crew uh, when, when the play is delivered and also make sure that because of what we're giving him option wise to get us out of trouble, you know, versus the the defensive coordinators that we're going to face in this league. Uh, I just feel like he's one of the smartest quarterbacks period that's available uh, to us. So he's done a fantastic job throwing the ball, accuracy, leading the team, arm strength. And then Nick Ta uh, Tayano uh, won the job as the, as the two. Nick's a big, strong quarterback, a big arm, uh, presents a problem with his legs as well. He's not a true runner, but he's a powerful guy that can do some things as well with his, his lower body. But, Super smart, uh, kind of took about this uh, quarterback situation like a pro, sucked in uh, everything AJ and, and Bruce was bringing to the table and, and really kind of elevated his play throughout camp and really made an impression on us. Um, so, and our running backs are going to be a collective group. Uh, I couldn't tell you right now who's one, two, or three. I think they're all one, A, B, and C. Uh, we feel good about them. We trust them. And uh, the tight end position, obviously, there's a high standard there with me. And uh, we, we got two guys out of the three that have really stepped up and uh, in, in Haskins and Sutherland. And then Jordan Thomas presents a, just a big body problem uh, in certain packages that we run. From a defensive aspect, uh, nice rotation at the defensive line position and pass rushers. We got some size. We got some speed. We got some undersized guys with speed. We got some bigger guys that have good, quick body movement. I think the strength of our team is our safeties and our linebackers. I'll put my linebackers up against any players, uh, uh, teams, players in this league. Fast, quick, clearly the smartest players in the building outside of our quarterback. Very intelligent, uh, which which gives us a huge advantage when we're trying to you know be complex in what we're doing and get calls out there and, and really kind of breaking down what we see from a second play to play basis. Uh, and then our secondary, again, it was tough calls in the secondary. You know, where are we going to go with five safeties? Where are we going to go with four safeties uh, or vice versa? We just felt like, you know, when you look at the body types and, and some of the teams were playing offensively, there's going to be a lot of spread teams. We wanted to make sure we had enough corners on this football team and flexibility at safety where guys were diverse enough to play nickel or be in uh, be a factor in coverage as well. So I think top to bottom, we, we like what we have. We work very hard in camp. I push these guys uh, with a strategy behind it to get them prepared for the season, but yet pulled back when the time was needed to get them healthy. And uh, we really like, you know, from top to bottom, like I said, we let go, we let go of some really good players. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, these are the guys for us that we feel like are, are going to get it done for us this season. The other question I have for you would be, how difficult was this going from scratch? It had to be 
kind of un, unparalleled, uh, never done before, I'm guessing, huh? Yeah, absolutely. You know, myself and Dave Bowler uh, really worked hand in hand on hand selecting these players. We did a lot of film work together. You know, we don't have a huge scouting staff. It's just Dave, myself, and my coaching staff. So it was really important to make sure, okay, we have a quarterback. We recruited a quarterback. Now we got to make sure we have the proper pieces around him so he feels comfortable and he feels good enough about, hey, number one, playing in this league. Uh, it's a guy that's got NFL experience. And, uh, you know, he wants to come to a team that's, you know, uh, well-prepared, well-detailed, well-coached, and quite frankly, a place that he can enjoy to play. And we've checked those boxes off for him. And we're excited about him. But yeah, this is great. I mean, I love the experience. Uh, it is hard. It's not a traditional year to year where you're trying to pick up, you know, five to 10 guys in the draft or free agency. Uh, you know, starting it from scratch is a challenge. And if you do your homework well, you know, there was a 5,000 players or whatever that was, and you found the right guys and you talked to the right coaches, we felt like we were able to get together the best assembly of players so we'll see what it looks like on the field. You know, I'm not quite sure uh, what that will look like. I don't think anybody does. But if it's the way we practice and we transfer that on what we're seeing on film, we feel good about the product that we're going to have out there on Sunday. Thank you. Yeah, right, awesome. We'll slide over to uh, Spectrum News. Greg Clermont, go right ahead. So on the the quarterback situation, backup quarterback is always the most popular uh, position out there because it's it's always the you know the 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 what's next. But given what you know you have in in AJ, what what really had to answer the the questions about what you needed in the number two? Honestly, guys, it, it's you know as a quarterback, you got to be able to function and operate at a high level. You have to be able to spit the verbiage out clearly, efficiently. And then when, once that verbiage gets spits out to the team, you're able to kind of start breaking down what you see in that five-second window once you come to the line of scrimmage. Uh, this is an NFL-style hybrid West Coast system like we talked about. It's sophisticated but yet simple, uh, and we try to make it that way. But there is a lot of terminologies and a lot of concepts that have to be understood at the line of scrimmage. Being an intelligent quarterback is something we – put a premium on when we started recruiting in the quarterback process and started working guys out. And we just feel like right now with, with, with Nick, he brings the best, uh, best presence within from hearing the play, delivering it to the huddle and getting to the line, able to make the call and be able to adjust and do the things close enough to what AJ can do. Uh, AJ does it at a very high level and uh, he understands, Hey, we got a bunch of motions and shifts. He's going to be able to hold things off. Hey, stop. We're down. The clock is here. You know, we have a, a 35 second clock. It's a little quicker than the, the normal NFL clock. So we're very cognizant of those things situationally every day, trying to crank that clock up for our quarterbacks. And it puts a little pressure on them to get the verbiage out and, and kind of make sure that they say it correctly and understand what they're saying and not just repeating it from the from the uh, from what the OSA is bringing them. So Nick, to us, uh, we feel like was the the most ready in that situation and, and obviously tangibly really strong arm. Uh, he's got movement ability and uh, he can extend some plays as well. And then given the, the training setup, um, certainly you've been in, in camp and training camp with the other teams, but now that you're actually going to be in the season, uh, what's that environment like uh, when, you know, is there a temptation to, I'm not saying spy, but I mean, how do you, you know, how do you, uh, how do you go about kind of, preparation and uh and not letting some of the out, outside noise that's kind of right in your neighborhood get get in the way of preparation yeah i mean you know I, we don't really care what the team or other teams we're playing does obviously we'll have more film as the weeks goes on versus our opponent to look at personnel and look at their base fronts there's only you know there's only four or five fronts you can run guys defensively and then offensively you know you're either using a tight end or you're not using a tight end as far as personnel you know, we have to execute. So it's really what we do and how we control it. So what we've been doing is preparing and making sure that we're on top of what we need to do. And then whatever presents itself versus San Antonio, uh, you know, versus DC, uh, versus Arlington, you know, that stuff really doesn't matter. So uh, we, you know, we know the coordinators, we know what they've done in the past. Uh, we'll go off some of those things as well. Personnel is look, you know, you got to prepare your personnel to be, be ready to go on game day. Uh, you know, you, you may have a name, you may have some players that excite you, but ultimately, if they're not showing what you need in the practice on a day to day basis and rise, raising up to the level and the standard that you set as a coach, then you kind of know what you're going to get. So hopefully, 
you know, our coach, our, our players and coaches are, are in line for that. I can't speak for anybody else, but it really is about what we do and not necessarily about what we see or the other team does. And we can always adjust like the other teams will have to do against us, you know, uh, throughout the games, at least early on. <laughs> All right. We'll move over to uh, Scoops. Andy, jump on in, bud. Hey, Coach, just kind of following up on that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of an unconventional, you know, game prep in line for you next week. And obviously you're having a limited amount of knowledge as, as to San Antonio and, and what they intend to do. But the opportunity there is that they probably have an equally limited you know, window into what you guys are doing. Talk about the challenge that that presents and the opportunity that that presents if you can. Yeah, well, they got to worry about us too, you know. So that's what we're trying to fit. we're trying to make sure that you know we're we're operating at a very high level. Uh, we're we're putting the pedal down uh, when we start this season. You know, we're not going to ease into things. We feel confident about what we're teaching, what we're installing, and what we're doing. Uh, that we can make adjustments as we move on. Um, you know, as far as uh, you know, what San Antonio brings to the table week one. Uh, you know, we, we kind of know their base looks. We know who their coordinators are, like I had mentioned. You know, Coach, Coach Herman's been in the XFL as a coordinator. We know his base fronts and what he wants to do. It's just the guys now are different. Uh, but ultimately, you know, they don't know what we have. So uh, I, I really don't have a problem with it. It doesn't bother me. I mean, when you're prepping for football, you obviously want to see and, and gather as much knowledge on third down blitz packages or wherever you want to get to. Uh, and from a personnel standpoint of what exactly the offense is going to bring to the table. Uh, but for us, we can only control what we can control, and they're in the same boat. So, you know, the, the staff that best prepares their guys for the game, that's the biggest thing. We feel good about where we're at today, uh, and once we get to the game, we'll find out, you know, uh, how well we did as a, of, of a job. You know, when you're in front of the fans, it's going to be loud. Uh, you know, now there's no coaches on the field. You know, we've tried to mimic those things with noise and sound, players and coaches on the sidelines for really the last two and a half weeks. So, you know, there's no coaching – uh, per se, as far as in between different sets and drills that we're doing, we're really letting the players go and we're coaching them up, you know, and the meeting's pretty hard and, and, and they bounce back and make those corrections for us when needed. Coach, when you think about preparing too for that game and, you know, for a lot of the guys, it's going to be the biggest game they've played in a while. And for some, probably the, you know, the biggest crowd or the largest television audience that they'll be in front of, do you have to kind of, um, you know, have prepare them to play within themselves or do you have to rein that in or what's the mood of the locker room? Yeah, there's going to be anxiety. There'll be anxiety for the coaches and player. Everybody will have it. I think for me as a former player, I always had that in the game, that pressure, that feeling, you know, before you start uh, any contest that you play at. And I played in a lot of them, but it's once you get out there and that first play happens, you know, now you start, you know, you start operating and functioning at a level that, you know, you've been training for your entire life. So, uh, yeah, it'll be different for each each and every player in our team. We don't know how they're going to react. Some of them have a lot of experience. Some of them played a big college crowd. Some of them haven't played in a year and a half. Uh, so, uh, you know, some of them haven't played uh, a four quarter game. I mean, do, can they, you know, do they have enough endurance, you know, so we have to make sure our depth is good uh, in those areas, especially in the trenches. So yeah, it's, it's going to be, uh, it'll be interesting. Like I said, we'll, we'll see what we have there on Sunday, but again, we're trying to prep them, condition them, toughen them up. Uh, for those things, uh, you know, so they're prepared to go on game day. All right, we'll head out uh, towards the East Coast. Trib Live, Mike Asti, jump in, bye. You're on mute still, Mike. <clears throat> All right, can you hear me now? We're good? We got awesome. All right, so, Coach, I wanted to introduce myself first. I do I do cover the West Virginia Mountaineers out of the, the Pittsburgh market, so I wanted to tap in here <laughs> with you being a W great. Uh, so, so, wanted to kind of – get your thoughts on you now as a coach kind of in your mind, because you're going through this process. You mentioned you're able to harken back to you being a former player and being able to touch on that. But what have you noticed about yourself and kind of learn from yourself or even any former coaches of yours that you've either talked to or taken something from to embark on this process? Because as it was mentioned earlier, this is a new process in general, but kind of a new career path for you as well. As, as you're thrown into this? Yeah, no question. Um, you know, listen, I've dove deep into this uh, head on. And, uh, you know, I was always good understanding that I'd learn a lot of this on the run. But, you know, I played for a lot of great coaches, uh, five organizations. Um, I tech, uh, text, uh, take taken a lot of detailed mental notes on the good and the bad from those coaches. And then it's how you want to do it. How do you want to go about uh, leading a team? I think the biggest thing for me, guys, 
is, you know, in, in 30 plus days, you know, prior, it'll be 40 ish as we lead into the game. How do I get these guys to trust me? How do I get these guys to buy into building a culture that I see fit for us? That's, that's going to be a standard requirement for them to hit any level above us and be ready to, to apply that uh, on, on game day on Sunday. Um, it hasn't really, it hasn't been a challenge because I see the guys buying in. You know, we scrimmaged Orlando and it kind of looked different on our end. We liked that. And the players saw that and they see, okay, there's a difference that when we watch the film at that point, early, uh, midway through the, through training camp, uh, you know, the, the way that they, you know, we, we did, you know, there's, there's teams that don't hit at all. Uh, there's teams that, you know, uh, went live occasionally, you know, we went live, we scrimmaged, we did a, a bunch of that stuff strategically throughout camp. Uh, because a lot of these guys, like you said, have not done a lot of these basic things at a, at a live level for a while. You have to do it. NFL players, guys that have do this for a living, that train year round, different story. I know the Eagles, I, I believe they didn't, they didn't hit or do anything the entire training camp. And I don't think they've done anything during the season, but they're the, been the best defense in the NFL uh, up to the Super Bowl coming up uh, this week. So there's different ways to do it, but clearly we had to do uh, some of that to get these guys prepared for me to sit there and think these guys are just going to turn it on and be able to go at a high level on game day is absurd because they're just, they just haven't seen it at a consistent basis. Even if they're with another team, you know, you're talking about limited amount of times, you're not really training for it. And, you know, quite frankly, we didn't know the condition of the players coming in as well. So we've been able to kind of get that up to par, mix that in during the season. And uh, that's what I've been trying to do. Honestly, uh, be real with these guys. I build a relationship with the players, but I'm not a, you know, I wouldn't say it's, a, you're, you're, it's like player friendly. Well, it's, it's one thing to build a relationship. It's another thing to push buttons when they need to be pushed. So can you build a relationship that's strong enough so that when I push the tight end or AJ or, you know, Lucas Dennis or Steven Gonzalez, they get it, they understand it. They have that thick skin and they go out and execute it at a high level because, you know, that's, that's the demands we have for it. So it's really just understanding your, your team. I think the adage of just coaching everybody the same and try and get everybody to buy in individually what you're trying to do. Everybody's different, especially in the XFL. We got guys that don't know each other and haven't met each other ever. And, and now all of a sudden, you know, they're coming together. And I, I feel that's the one thing we've come together as a team very quickly and built bonds. And these players have built bonds with each other. And I like the way we're going there. And I think ultimately that helps us as we go into the season. And just also, you guys drafted Letty Brown, another West Virginia product. So you're both West Virginia guys, but obviously different generations. What did you know about Lenny prior, Letty prior to drafting him? And then how, how did he look in camp? What's the progress with Letty Brown? Obviously also some time off from playing with spot area with the Chargers, but in terms of actually getting in a game, what should fans expect from him and just your knowledge of Letty Brown? prior to, to drafting him because of the WVU connection. Yeah. So, you know, we brought six backs in the camp, Letty, you know, we cut it down to four, actually Letty got released. So that Let, Letty's not a part of our 51 man roster, but Letty is the first back back. Everybody goes down, Brian, Mateo, Kareem <laughs> okay. Walker, uh, Letty comes right back to us. You know, we told him, you know, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. We need, we need total package running backs. You know, we, we don't have a lot of grace period for guys that can just catch or can run. Letty did a great job at every facet of the running back position. I just think that, you know, when you look at running backs and you have to travel three, they got to be special team providers. And when you look at Kareem Walker, Mateo Duran, and Brian Hill, these guys are kind of core special teams guys. Not that Letty couldn't do it, but the opportunity when it led it there, we didn't feel that that was a, a strength of his initially. But as far as a running back, you know, he was very, you know, was the first guy up in every drill. For taking the reps, you know, Art Valero let those guys situate their their who went one, two, three, and four throughout the camp, and and he took a, uh, took it upon himself to be that first guy. But he runs the ball hard. I watched his entire college career. I really liked him as a back, strong downhill guy. Doesn't have a lot of burst and speed, uh, but he gets it done, man. He finds the hole and he gets it the yards. Doesn't doesn't waste a lot of motion. And, uh, you know, for us, with our best 51, he was right on the outskirts. But if one of those guys go down, he immediately comes back to our football team. Like him a lot, great attitude, bought in, didn't know much about him from a personality standpoint or anything like that. Heard a lot of mixed reviews from scouts and all these different things. But again, 
you you bring a guy in regardless of you know these guys have some issues in the past or whatever that may be if they buy into what you're selling and you see it on a day-to-day basis and they start you know building and living up to that standard then they can play for me and that's all that's all that Letty did since he was here but unfortunately you know we just crunching the numbers down he wasn't able to be kept thanks coach yep all right. Uh, before I circle back through, anybody who had a question, if I didn't see a hand raised, if it didn't go through, uh, Mark down in Alabama, did you want to jump in or are you, you good? I don't want to pressure you. No, but... I got a question. I got a question. I wanted to ask you about uh, Kareem Walker in his first pro experience. Uh, what got him on the team and what kind of role uh, might he have? Yeah, when we took Kareem, he was late. You know, we had some academy, NFL academy players that we brought in. And I'll be honest with you, I can't take credit, nor can – uh, my my DPP mark. We threw a dart at the at the running backs, and and the dart went through Kareem's name, and he's been a subtle surprise for us. So I can't really take the uh, take it upon myself that we found him. But man, I'll tell you now, young, hungry, doesn't know how to be a pro in my office often throughout training camp. What do I need to do, coach? How do I become a better pro? How do I take notes? Like the very basic needs to become a player and live up to the standard. He wanted to know, and he asked the questions. He was not bashful. Uh, excellent pass protector. A uh, little bit of a tall runner, but he runs hard, aggressive, finishes, and uh, catches the ball very, very smooth. So he brings a lot to the table, and he is one of our core special teams players. He gets it. You know, He understands he wasn't going to make this team as a running back first. He was going to make it as a special team player. But he has been a very good surprise for us, and we'll see what it looks like for him as far as reps and stuff, but he'll be on the field. Uh, He'll be helping us in certain areas, but he's been a a guy that's really piqued our interest and, and really won over the coaching staff when he probably came in as the six on the depth chart uh, when we started camp. Um, On your quarterbacks, when you look around the league, there's not a lot of, certainly not a lot of NFL experience among the quarterbacks in the league and not a lot of pro experience. How is it for you? How much of an advantage is it for you to have one of the quarterbacks that actually has NFL game, NFL game starting experience. I think it's huge, um, but it's been a while for AJ now. You know, it's uh, it's a lot of preseason uh, and a lot of practicing, but uh, he handles himself like he's in the NFL. I mean, uh, you know, on the field, he is an extension of our, our coaching staff. And, you know, him and Bruce, uh, that's a great combination in that, in that meeting room because, uh, you know, these are systems that he's very fluent in. Uh, Very easy for him to pick up. We have some other pro guys, receivers that are fluent in this system as well. Uh, But it's huge. I mean, now he, you know, the the one thing AJ has checked every box and just like every other player in our team, you know, he has to go out and do it. You know, we're offered him a platform uh, to be the best quarterback in the XFL, to be the, a a quarterback that can lead a team that has a good roster of players uh, very deep, hopefully get us to the championship, but that's on AJ. You know, AJ is going to have to go out there and it's not going to be it's not going to be great all the time. You know, we we got some players there are going to be some ups and downs, but that's why we're pushing them in training camp, trying to make it as realistic game wise as possible. And uh, from a game plan standpoint and what we can put in on his plate to help us at the line of scrimmage, man, I, I got to think it's it's head and shoulders above a lot. You know, there's Danucci's in the league. There's some other good quarterbacks, but a guy that's kind of done it. And then of course the leadership qualities and the championship pedigree comes from, from college. Uh, it better work out for us because that's what we're leaning on. Uh, and that's what we expect it to be a, a bonus for us. When we, we talked him in and recruited him to playing for us. All right. We got a couple minutes left. Uh, Greg Palermo, follow-up question. Go right ahead. Just along the lines of surprise players, uh, any other uh, kind of out of nowhere, you knew a little bit about them, but they've, they've shown you much more. Yeah. Um, you know, Darius Shepard and, and Marcel Aitman are exactly what we, we want it uh, at the receiver position. We have great depth there. So, um, you know, we, we feel like we can plug in any guy and they're good uh, from a tight end standpoint. Jake Sutherland has been uh, basically an overachieving tight end at every aspect of his game. Uh, he's ca- he's caught everything. Doesn't look like he's very fast, but he he runs pretty good, blocks well, understands the mental aspect of the game as well, and uh, he's been great. Uh, offensively, the line, the biggest surprise for us again, a guy that we not uh, did not originally draft. We got him uh, afterwards, but uh, Mike Panashuk, sixty-one, our center. Uh, he's going to be special now. Uh, tough, 
former defensive lineman at Michigan State, uh, tra transferred over to the offensive line uh, in, min in a mini camp uh, with the Carolina Panthers and just was raw. And we brought him in, coached him up. And he's, uh, you know, like I said on previous calls, he's, he's rarely lost uh, a one-on-one -on -one in, in pass pro. And uh, he's tough as nails, man. So he's just kind of figuring out and getting smarter with points and, and you know, the games that def defensive linemen play. But he does it physically. And I just know that A.J. and Nick feel really good about him at the center position uh, as well. Defensively, uh, you know, I talked about our linebackers. Uh, Lakeem Williams is a stud. Mike Rose is going to be a stud. Uh, Trey Watson will be the smartest linebacker in the league by far. May not be the fastest, but he gets there because of instincts and what he sees. Uh, almost a quarterback level mentality. Uh, and then from a back end standpoint, um, Brandon Sebastian has is, is been great. Um, you know, he's uh, he's led the crew from day one. His upward rise at the corner position has been strong. And uh, man, we feel like we're really deep at safety. These guys are really flexible. If I had to pick a guy out that's really stepped up, Ben DeLuca uh, has done a great job at camp as well. So uh, those are just some of the names. But man, there's LaCale London, defensive line, number 96, you know, belongs in the NFL. We, we're lucky to have him. So uh, he should uh, he should be making causing havoc up front this season as well. I really like him. Special, strong, can play multiple positions, and uh, he'll be a force to be reckoned with this season. All Thanks, right, Every, everybody, good. Anybody else need one last question? All good. All right, we appreciate it, Coach. Thank you very much. And uh, again, we'll uh, we'll begin week one next week. So get ready. The XFL season is upon us. So thanks again, everybody. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Brian. Yep. yep. Thanks. Bye-bye.